What's going on everybody and welcome back to another review. So today we've got 89 rated middle icon Fernando Herrero. Hope it's probably not even Herrero. I'm probably butchering that. So please let me know whether you're from Spain or you are a fan of this man himself. Please let me know down below how to pronounce his name because I am honestly absolutely terrible with his names. But coming in at 400,000 coins, this card looks very nice. We managed to pull him in a foot draft and if you don't know, foot drafts right now online uh, incredibly sweaty everyone's trying to pack a rule breaker so everyone is grinding draft so we but i'm actually happy with the amount of clips we've got with him we've got a solid three to four minutes of raw gameplay with him and i really did enjoy this card we got to test basically all aspects of this card as well which is what i am very happy about before you get into this if you guys are new and you do want to help support the channel you can do so by simply dropping a like and subscribing like i said help support the channel and the support recently has been absolutely incredible Incredible. So starting off, you'll just see in the background the literally the thumbnail maybe, I don't know. But I'm gonna go through as a player bio player traits, then obviously we will hop into the gameplay and end it off with the pros and cons end screen. So coming in at six foot two with medium medium work rates, preferred foot is right with two star skill moves and three star weak foot. What I can notice and say straight away is the media medium work rates, but not gonna be great. As a center back, you want, not want, you need high defensive work rates. Yes, you can go around it, you can counter it with custom tactics. Make sure he's on, stay back while attacking. Otherwise, he'll be pushed up further than some other players, and or center backs, I should say. Like, it's not in breaking, it's not game changing. It's better than low, right? It's better than medium low. So medium medium, it's already going to be a con. And I can say there was there were times where he was caught a little bit out of position and he was pushed up a little bit further than the others. But hey, it is what it is. And I feel like having him on stay back while attacking in your instructions will easily counter it because he is a top top card. Going to attributes the main reason: 71 pace, not too much pace as a centre back. It's acceptable with a shadow, which without a doubt go with a shadow. You need a shadow on this card. He goes to 81 pace. Last year it was a plus 15 sprint speed boost and a plus 10 acceleration boost with a shadow, but now it's only plus 10 on each, so it's had a little bit of a nerf, but still a shadow will put him to 80 acceleration and 82 sprint speed, giving him a total of 81 pace, which as a centre back, it is what it is. If you have a pacey centre back next to him, then that's ideal. You can push out with a pacey centre back, and then you can have him on stay back, and he will stay back, with his work rates he's got medium attacking so medium medium he'll stay back he won't do too much and like yes he does get caught out of position in a defense but like i said he's not always going to be halfway up the pitch it's not that bad it is not that bad and as you'll see in some clips what i mean when i am saying these medium work rates but 81 pace is more than enough and if you pair him up with a pacey center back then your pacey center back you can bring out you can jockey with your pacey center back while herrero probably butchering that is going to stay back and do all of the work in the defense he's like the leader he's like the leader as a center back if you will he was very good and i did find that as you'll see in the clip soon his passing as well caught me by surprise i'm used to having center backs with very poor passing but he's got 88 long passing 79 short passing some really good good stats his balance of 83 as well is very good turning around jockeying with him his balance he turned very well which i did like his 86 reactions and 88 composure as well as a very good stat 91 interceptions 91 heading accuracy 92 defensive awareness 92 stand tackle 77 slide tackle but with a shadow that literally interceptions to 96 heading accuracy to i believe they stay the same but he goes to 99 awareness 99 stand tackle and 87 slide tackle 80 stamina 88 jumping 87 strength and 80 aggression this man is incredible player traits as well a power hitter team player and a solid player so solid player and team player don't do anything but the power hitter is a good trait to have being six foot two with 88 jumping and 91 hitting accuracy he will come up for corners with a power hitter as well he will bag a couple goals from corners especially because this fifa corners are actually decent you can actually score from corners of FIFA. It's, it's very impressive, but I'm actually looking at his club career now, and it's interesting. 
because he's played 600 games, 601 games for Real Madrid, and he scored 127 goals. That's over a goal every six matches at centre-back. So I feel like he was definitely a centre-back that was pushed up further, um, hence the medium-medium work rates. It makes sense. You're not going to have high defensive work rates and bag a goal every six matches in real life. So I guess in a way that is realistic. So hopping into the gameplay, we do go 1-0 down straight away. Not an ideal start at all. That Martial really does haunt me. As you can see here, boys, as you're about to see, his pace, he can't handle Mbappe, but what he can handle is an incredible tackle. What a challenge, literally 8 minutes in, we're already getting straight into it, 1-0 down, and honestly, what a tackle that was. As you can see here, his pace, I know my opponent's about to deliver the ball in the box, so I stay in the middle, it's a 1v3, and we do survive it. Herrero, hopefully, I am pronouncing that right, does his job very, very nicely to get in the way and just tip it over the bar with a deflect, and once again, a very good interception there, but something I did find to very good with him as I was saying in the intro is his passing his passing was absolutely absolutely phenomenal there were areas like that turning with 65 agility especially with a ball he feels very clunky but he has 83 balance so he turns very well 83 balance you can turn your body so jockeying with him while holding both triggers trying to mark your opponent's striker he can do decently well because obviously 83 balance for a center back is very good and he can turn like it's nothing we get caught out of position here good skill move on my opponent's part luckily he misses and Herrero is there to get the ball out and like I said that passing caught me off guard I'm not used to have center backs having high passing um and yeah Herrera he caught me off guard in the game I was like I didn't take pay attention to his stats beforehand but I was literally like this dude's passing is actually really good really good and that balance as well this is a whole lot of jamminess he does very poor there but we drop back to it he gets it straight back to my opponent's attacker deflex into De Gea's hands but jockeying the opponent with him is absolutely incredible his passing I found was insane and when I say jockeying that opponent right I mean the balance, like turning with the ball. 65 agility, he's very clunky. He's a center back though. 65 agility, he's clunky. But if your opponent's attack has a ball, you hold both triggers and try and jockey him, then, or jockey your opponent's attacker, he does very well with that due to his high balance. He literally turns, if he gets caught out of position, he turns very fast. And that's one thing I did notice with him. So he's got a very well-rounded center back as well. 84 physical, 90 defending, 70 dribbling, 75 passing. 71 pace obviously 66 shooting but as you can see on the screen is pros and cons starting off with his pros is has to be his passing his balance his defending and physical six foot two as well relatively tall center back i i noticed that he does win a lot of challenges power header trait as well with a power header trait plus 91 heading accuracy, plus 88 jumping. As I said in the intro, he is going to be very good in the air, both clearing it and trying to bag a goal or two from a corner, which is very, very meta this FIFA. I notice you do score quite a bit from corners, but pace as well, pace is not con-worthy, but pace is not pro-worthy. 71 pace, it's average for a centre-back, but the thing with him, he's an icon centre-back. People are going to be buying him for the links, plus icons just have a feel about them. I don't know what it is, but Ramos, if you compare the Ramos and Herrero, Ramos has basically better in every stat except defending, um, or it's very similar. So if you were to compare the two, Ramos has better stats, but it's something about icons that just make them over powered it could be the links that makes him go for more which it is but it also is just an icon he's an icon people want to buy him plus he is very good i feel like he was better than ramos when i used ramos i personally liked herrero more although ramos has better stats just some icons have special icon feels about them if you guys know what i mean but one thing like i said is a balance as well that will be under a pro usually it wouldn't matter as a center back but when you've got 83 balance jockeying your opponent's attack he does very well if he's caught out of position as you saw in a couple of clips here then he instantly turns around and what I was talking about with medium work rates does go under a con because he was pushed up a little bit further now and again sometimes it paid off for example that interception with him that's his work rates he started to push up the pitch a little bit yes not ideal for a center back but it can pay off very big and it can start a counter attack so it's not the end of the world but his medium defensive work rates will be under a con also under a con is literally just 
that's really it. That's really it. I'm looking at his card. I'm like, what else would I put under a con? And I'm trying to remember when I used this card, which this footage was from a day ago. That's really it. His wheel crates weren't great. But other than that, the shooting doesn't matter. His passing was incredible. 88 long passing, 79 short passing. His pace as well is acceptable. Once again, not con worthy, not pro worthy. His pace was acceptable. His dribbling, agility of 65. Yes, he's clunky on the ball, but that does not matter. He is a centre back. And as for defending and physical, he's basically everything you can ask for for a centre back for the recommended chem style today it's a no brainer it has to be a shadow you need that pace boost going to 81 pace as I was discussing in the intro is just incredibly important and as for the rating out of 10 10 being let's say a Rio Ferdinand the most broken centre back on the game an informed Joe Gomez being a 10 out of 10 and say a 5 out of 10 being a centre back that he just wasn't great and I didn't enjoy using him and of course an 8 out of 10 being decent Herrero is going to be an 8.5. He's not decent. He's not over overpowered, but he does his job. He's an icon. Therefore, I am going to give him an 8.5. He was very good, and I really liked this card. Now, is he worth it? Coming in at 400,000 coins. Yes, he's worth it. He's worth it. He will constantly drop. If you guys are watching this, let me know down below how much he is. As a, at the time you guys are watching this, because in a month or two, he'd probably be literally 100 or 200k, because he, maybe not, maybe not that much, maybe like 200 or 250k, because that's the thing with FIFA, Icons start off high, we're only a month into the game, not even, like a few weeks into the game, he is going to keep dropping, but I really did like this card, so he is worth it, and hopefully this review did help you guys out, remember lads, if this did, make sure to smash a like and subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you.